you gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here, and for the first time in a millennium, I actually have a positive video for you all. Today, I am going to be discussing Love, Victor, a TV show that is set in the Simonverse. This video will have some spoilers, so watch it at your own risk. As in my last video, I will have links to sources that help aid the Black Lives Matter movement in the description. If you have time to watch this entire video, you also have time to look through the links. Now, I am going to jump straight into the video because I am so, so excited to discuss this series with you all. Just to give a quick overview, though all of you who are watching this video have probably seen the series. Love, Victor is, in a sense, a sequel to Love, Simon. The series follows the story of Victor Salazar, who has just moved to Creekwood with his family. Victor is currently questioning his sexuality, and as soon as he sets foot in Creekwood, he learns the legend of Simon Spear. Victor starts messaging Simon for advice on how to go about his messy and complex journey of figuring out his sexuality. If you were around back in 2018, you probably know that Love, Simon is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is easily in my top three. So when Love, Victor was first announced, I was quite frankly scared. Both Love, Simon and Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda are such important stories to me. So as a fan, it was crucial to me that Love, Victor do justice to its source material. And after watching the show, I can with 100% confidence say that it did. One of my favorite aspects of Simon's story, both the book and the movie, is the emphasis on community. The feeling of belonging is so present in Simon's story. It is something he himself is in search of, and it is also something that his story provides for the reader slash watcher. Victor's story honors the importance of community in the exact same way. When I think of Simon's story, again, both book and movie, I feel like warm and gooey inside, Simon's story truly provides a home and a safe space for the reader slash watcher. Victor's story has that same warm and gooey feeling. At the core, both Victor and Simon's stories are the same in how they create this safe space for the reader slash watcher, but their individual journeys are very different. I feel like that's one of the biggest positives of the series. It manages to be uniquely its own while still doing justice to its source material. I think I have to begin my thoughts on Victor's life by saying that I really love the fact that the story has a gay Latino main character. Queer Rep is often very white, so I really appreciate that they made the choice to have the main character be Latino and have his family be Latino and not shy away from including aspects of his culture in the story. Then I have to take a moment to talk about how much I love Felix. Felix is the best friend that all of us want, but very few of us find. His character, yes, is the traditional funny sidekick in many ways. He is easily lovable because of his happy-go-lucky personality, but he is also more than that. He has his own story and his own journey, and I really liked that they started touching on that in the later episodes and kind of paved the way for them to continue doing so in the second season. Felix is Victor's best friend and truly the best friend Victor could hope for, but like I said earlier, he is also more than that. And I think that this show did a wonderful job of balancing both of those aspects. And Mia, Lake, and Andrew also make up much of the main cast at Creekwood. I did not expect to, but I found that I actually really do like Mia. In a lot of ways, she seems like the perfect girl, but I truly don't see her that way. I think that she is a very good person. But I also think that throughout the course of the show, it becomes more evident that she also has flaws. A prime example of a flaw would be how she essentially uses Andrew when she is feeling bad and she needs someone to lean on, especially considering the fact that Andrew very obviously has feelings for her. By this, I just mean to say that, yes, Mia is genuinely a good person, but she is also more than her traditional stereotype. 
As for Lake, I think she's one of the most interesting characters on the show. She develops a lot over the course of the season, and there are a few pivotal moments that help her along her journey. The two that stand out to me are one, when she stands up to Andrew for using her, despite the fact that she did really like him at the time. And the second one happens much later on in the season when we see Lake's interaction with her mother, which is very telling of the environment that she's been forced to grow up in. I find her character very intriguing because as we discover more about her, I want to then learn even more about her because I think there are so many layers to her and to her experience. As for Andrew, I don't really have much to say about him because I personally feel like I need to learn more about his character and his backstory before I form a concrete opinion on his character. I feel that he is very necessary to the story, I just don't know how I feel about him yet. Then we have the love interest of the show, or if you want to get technical, one of the two love interests of the show, Benji. I cannot even begin to tell you how much I love Benji. He is the perfect boy. Throughout the show, outside of the fact that I really do ship Victor and Benji, I was very frustrated with Benji and Derek's relationship as Derek just treated him like crap. I really thought that they were going to break up after the one year anniversary dinner and then they didn't. But then they did, and I was very happy, not only because I really do ship Victor and Benji, but also because my boy deserves so much better. I do want to commend, though, that this show did not endorse cheating. Listen, I completely understand that shows are shows, but so often in media, cheating is normalized, and they did not do that in this show, which I did really appreciate. While Benji almost walking out of Victor's life was the worst thing I've had to witness, it also was morally correct. And that is yet another reason why Benji is the perfect boy. I really want to learn more about Benji's life in the second season. We do get a few snippets of what his journey with dealing with his sexuality has been like, but I hope we get more of a backstory because I want to know Benji as a whole. I really love Benji. And to finish out my thoughts on Benji, I will say that I will give up being a lesbian for Benji, for him only. And that brings me to Victor, my son. Yes, I have legally adopted him. I love Victor. I expected to like him. I did not expect to love him this much. I just adore everything about him and I want to protect his pure heart from this cruel, cruel world. Victor is far too willing to sacrifice himself and his happiness for the people he cares about, most often his family. But I will admit that I really loved the dynamics between his family because it showcased a family that really truly deeply loves each other, but that is also extremely flawed. I really liked seeing that. I'd really love to see more of Adrian, and I'd love to see more development for Pilar in the next season, because I think both of them have strong foundations that could be beautifully expanded on. As for Victor, he truly is so good. He is genuinely just a good person. But he is also imperfect, which I think makes him a very authentic character. Often, coming out and coming to terms with your sexuality is messy and confusing and complicated and imperfect, and this show encapsulated that perfectly. This show didn't portray coming out as a walk in the park because it often isn't. And that's part of what I love about Victor and Simon's relationship. It felt so authentic and real. You know, I would have given anything to have a grown-up Simon Spear mentor me through my journey with my sexuality and my gender, but we are not all so lucky. Going back to the theme of community, I think that this show goes one step further than Love, Simon in that it really emphasizes the power of queer community. Because Victor doesn't have the support from his family the way Simon does, he started looking elsewhere for support, and that allowed the show to showcase the importance of queer community. Episode 8, which I think about a lot because it 
deeply affected me is the perfect example of what having this community really means. When Bram showed up on screen, I flat out fell out of my chair. And when Simon showed up on screen, I screamed so loud that my mom had to come ask if I was okay. Beyond the fact that seeing Bram and Simon all grown up got me very emotional, Simon's conversation with Victor outside the club was one of the most impactful scenes of the entire show. That scene captured the importance of supporting other queer people and the diversity of all of our own individual experiences in such a beautiful way. And just a sidebar, there was something so meaningful about seeing Simon and Bram all grown up, if college can be considered all grown up. Yes, this is a fictional show, but seeing two queer people make it is a sign of hope. In a way, that's what Simon symbolizes to Victor. He symbolizes a life after high school. And when you are stuck in that environment, a symbol like that can be your saving grace. After Simon and Victor's conversation, the scene where Victor comes out to Felix is so heartfelt and meaningful. I wish I had the words to accurately describe how I feel about that scene, but honestly when I think about it, I just want to cry. In a good way. The way Felix responds, the way he hugs Victor, it feels so real. To me, that's what makes it so powerful. Of course, I love when Victor and Benji finally got together, but I couldn't fully celebrate because Victor was still officially dating Mia at the time. I just wish that it hadn't ended that way, though I know it needed to for the plot to continue. I just really want Victor and Benji to be happy together because they are very important to me and I love them. You know, for the past day, as I am filming this a few days before it will actually be up, I have honestly been sad that I finished the show because I know I can't re-watch the show for the first time. I have never felt that way after finishing a show before. I don't know if there will ever be words in the English language that can describe what the Simon verse means to me and what it has done for me. I may not have had a Simon Spear guiding me through my journey with my gender and sexuality, but I have had stories like Simon's and Victor's that have helped me to take one more step towards the finish line, which in my eyes is just acceptance of yourself. So in a way, I did have Simon Spear guiding me, and I still do. But I just have to say thank you, love Victor, for letting me see a part of myself in your story. And I cannot wait to see where his story goes next. I am going to end the video now before I start crying. So that's gonna be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe because that would be the logical decision. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what your thoughts on Love, Victor are. As usual, all of my social media, my Goodreads, and my coffee will be linked in the description below if you'd like to support me anywhere else. And also, please take the time to check out the links for resources for the Black Lives Matter movement in the description of this video. That's gonna be all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are having a lovely day or night wherever you are. Please remember that you are beautiful and you deserve the world. And I will see you soon for a brand new video. Goodbye!